Kenneth, thank you so much for being here with uh, with us at uh, UZ. So you are a paleontologist, you're a geologist. Uh, you've discovered the biggest uh, dinosaur uh, ever discovered yet, the Dreadnoughtus, right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the most massive dinosaur for which we can calculate a weight. Um, so there are some very tall ones and very long ones, but Dreadnoughtus is super massive. It weighs about 65 tons. Okay, so uh, okay, I, I've read 40 tons, but it's even more, 65 tons. Okay, that's, yes. that's crazy. So you've uh, written a book called Why Dinosaurs Matter, which explains us that we should like, uh, be more interested in dinosaurs and they can, they can tell us some things about our future. So first off, I want to go back a little bit. So how did you get into this uh, this this passion about dinosaurs? I don't know if you have, do you have like a memory when you were a kid or something like that? I do. Uh, like a lot of paleontologists, I got interested in this when I was a very small boy. Okay. And so when I was in second grade, a woman brought a box of rocks and minerals into my class. And I had never really seen things like this before. I grew up on the ocean where there's mostly sand and mud. And it just astounded me. Uh, the next day I wrote an essay in school about igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. And I wrote that sedimentary rocks were the best kind of rocks because you could find fossils in them. And now that I have a PhD in geology, I can confirm that they are the best kind of rocks. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's, that's really uh, inspiring. And so, yeah, you've published this book, Why Dinosaurs Matter. Mm -hmm. can you, so can you tell us what can we read in this book that we haven't like, seen in Jurassic Park, for example? Lots, yes. <laughs> Lots of stuff, uh, really? <laughs> so, well, Jurassic Park is not exactly, um, you know, a scholarly of course. book. Um, of course, yeah. So, uh, you know, I wrote the book and named it Why Dinosaurs Matter, because people are very interested in dinosaurs, and that's my specialty. But I could have called it Why the Past Matters. Mm. And the past matters because the future matters. We're all more concerned with the future than the past, I think even us paleontologists, but we don't have access to the future. Nobody remembers the future. We can't do experiments in the future. And the present is really nothing, right? It's gone before you can think of it. So all of the answers that we will ever have to help guide our way into this very perilous environmental future that we're all facing all come from the past. And it was Winston Churchill who said, the further back you look, the further ahead you can see. So there are many lessons that are trapped in the rock record, trapped in the paleontological record, that show how the planet responds to disruptions and perturbations and climate change and extinction. And I think we would be very foolish and arrogant to ignore the rich history of this planet as we try to solve our problems today. Of course, yeah, and so do you have like something, I don't know, something special we could learn from dinosaurs? I mean, they got, ext they got extinct not because of them, uh, of uh, what they did to the environment, so maybe there's something to look uh, into there? That's right, well, w what the geological record tells us is that it doesn't have to be this way. You know, mm. worlds don't have to have humans any more than they have to have dinosaurs. We all got lucky. And being lucky, I think, is a great feeling, but it should lead to gratitude, not pride. And so when we look at the things that are happen happening in the environment today with global warming and sea level rise and ocean acidification and the biodiversity crisis, these are serious issues that threaten the not only you know, the well-being of our species, but ultimately could threaten the existence of our species. And, you know, I, I know it seems from our seat in the present right now that we're inevitable and things are always going to be this way, but geology tells us that that's not true. Everything comes to an end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to make sure that our end is way, way out there and not pretty close. And, you know, our use of petroleum is largely driving this, and petroleum is a finite resource. We, we're not going to make more of it except over geological time. Mm -hmm. So it matters a lot. You know, with the petroleum era is going to be one short interval in the arc of human history. And it might be this long or it might be this long. And whether it's this long or this long really determines much about our future prospects. We need to get off this stuff and we need to get off it soon so that we can preserve what we have. So do you think we could really, uh, I mean, in a realistic way, face extinction in, uh, I don't know, maybe not a couple of years, but hundreds of years, or even, or even less than that, if we don't change our behaviors at all? Well, the first thing we would face is a, is a huge diminishment in the quality of life. Mm 
-hmm. And so, you know, maybe the species itself doesn't go extinct, but if we keep degrading the environment, no one on the planet will be able to aspire and achieve their dreams. No one on the planet will be able to have the kind of future for their children that they want. No one on the planet will really be very comfortable. Um, and, you know, none of us are photosynthetic. We all rely on other animals and plants and ecosystems for our well-being. The Earth itself is going to be fine. You know, the Earth yeah. as a planet, you know, it's going to just, you know, slough us off like a like a bruise that it had, yeah. like a like a scab. Um, it's us we have to worry about. It's our biosphere that we have to worry about, and we need these ecosystem resources for our well-being, and we're using them right now as a trash can. Yeah, that's that's uh, it's horrible in a certain way, and so you, we we've talked about the dreadnoughts. You've discovered this mm -hmm. this uh, this amazing uh, and and giant dinosaur. Do you think there are still some some dinosaurs and some creatures from from this time that uh, that we still haven't discovered yet? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, we even are like more uh, fantastic or giant ones or absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, dinosaurs are around for 165 million years. We've only been discovering dinosaurs for a little more than 150 years. And so, you know, I think we are a long way from peak dinosaur. Uh, so there are many, many more species out there. You know, I'd be surprised if we've discovered 1% of the species so far. And I'm sure there are dinosaurs that are out there that are a lot bigger than dreadnoughtus. There are dinosaurs that are probably you know, amazing in ways that we can't even conceive of now. It used to be 100 years ago that humans discovered about one dinosaur species a year. By 1970, it was about six a year. Now it's about one a week. And that rate of discovery is just increasing as the world becomes freer, as travel becomes easier, and as the population grows, some percentage of those people end up being paleontologists. So we have more eyes in more places on the ground than ever before, and the rate of discovery is just skyrocketing. Okay, thank you so much, Kenneth. Thank you for having, uh, for being uh, here with us, and, and uh, let's enjoy your show later well, on today. Yeah, it's been a great pleasure. <laughs> uh, USI is a great organization. It's a great conference, and I think everybody that comes here will leave with a lot of inspiration. Thank you. Thank you so much for these kind words.